Okay, today we have this drill to fix. Um, we're gonna, it's a rigid brand. I think this was originally from America. Um, quite a good solid drill. And the trigger switch, I've already looked at this, the trigger switch has burnt out contacts basically. They're well and truly worn out after years and years of use. We're gonna see if this switch is anything like the original. It looks like it's quite a similar setup. But uh, the original one's about 80 odd dollars Australian. Well, this one, um, I think was, you know, $5 delivered or something. So may not be the, quite the same build quality, but we'll have a look and see if there's any way we can use this other switch. We've already had this in pieces. See if this switch is anything like the other one. And to be fair, it looks like it actually fits pretty much in the same hole. Uh, I'm not sure if our direction sensor select this already is the same but yeah even that looks the same so this original switch i forget the brand does have it on here somewhere uh, oh, i really can't read it anymore let's see where is it oops there goes our motor Yeah, I'll have to add that later, I think, what brand this switch is. Uh, what does it say? Ma... Marquardt, that's it. M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T, I think, Marquardt switch. And I think that's the, the part number there, 2711, 5516, 25 amp, uh, 24 volt DC. This other one was a slightly lower current, I think. 7.2 to 24 volt DC, yeah, up to 16 amps, which I don't know that this, this um, battery, which is a lithium iron, what's our... Where's our current rating or average rating? 25.7 watt hour, maybe? A bit odd. It doesn't seem to give a normal kind of rating. But anyway, I think 16 amps should be enough to, to do the job. So, yeah, so far all is looking good here. Um, we'll just check this direction selector here. Seems to fit on there. Got two eyes to go to the motor, motor one and motor two on the new one, or motor minus, motor plus on the other one. Uh, got a battery plus in this case. Ah, oh, yeah, battery minus, battery plus is the red one as the standard colour coding. So we need to reuse the original wires on that, and we've also got a an LED on this one, which doesn't look like our original drill has, but Possibly we can actually mount that LED somewhere for him, so he gets that as a free feature. Now, that's not set to the right position. Okay, the new switch seems to work. So, yeah, this should be a fairly straightforward case of just resoldering a few wires. I might actually use the original wires. Got my soldering iron going here, so we'll see if these are going to come off. Mm, pretty bloody old solder. Yeah, they're not going to come off an hurry. But yeah, I probably should have put some new flux on that. Yeah, it's starting to go. Let's see if we can get these off. Yeah, it might even be easy to use the, orig the original wires, but anyway. We'll use the new wires in place of the original wires. Where's my solder? Yeah, just put some fresh solder on there to get some new flux in the... Get the heat into the old solder, which is coated with lots of oil and probably sawdust and God knows what from years of this drill being used. Pretty stubborn, wrapped around through the terminal and 
wrapped around it. Ah, oh, geez, it's getting hot now. If there was a bit more water, I'd just cut it off and start again, but I may have to end up doing that anyway. Okay, there's our terminals off that. Our wires to the motor. Try and tidy that back up a bit. Uh, just pinch the um, sponge holder off my soldering iron to try and flatten this out a bit. At least the, the old wires are good solid ones. New ones look a bit flimsy in comparison. Okay. So. Let's see what sort of terminals the new one has on it solder sucker not a real big hole in it so might have to see if we've got enough wire here to cut to go like that yeah there's not really much to play with here Much length here to work with. So that might be a little bit of a problem. Ugh, grease everywhere. Yeah, I'm not sure I can easily get these old wires through the, the new switches eyelets. I'm probably gonna have to try and suck the solder off. as much as possible so that I can flatten these wires out a bit twist them back together I'll just use the metal again even though it'll probably take some heat out of it Get some big pliers here and try and yeah that's a lot better we can pretty much twist those back together now that I've removed the solder so we're just getting these wires bundled back up again Now even if I can't go through the new eyelet here, um, I can certainly get a good solder face on there and get a good connection just that way. I think mechanically it should be fine just to solder it on. Um, even if we can't fit mechanically attach it through that hole, there's plenty of room to get solder in there. Lots of solder on it. And we'll just solder it flat on the face. Add a bit more solder to really get that well and truly attached at all possible points. Okay, that's our negative on. Give that wire another coat of fresh solder. Plenty of solder on the terminal. And then just push that hard on. Lots of solder out each side. Whew, hot. Okay, there's our positive and negative to the motor attached. Now again, we'll use the original wires. We should be able to 
hopefully we remove this yes there we go move our battery terminal make it a bit easier to work on oh, clean that off now uh, got a bit of bit of heat shrink on these terminals so we'll just remove that don't know if there's much point at really having heat shrink there but that's what they've done oh, I guess with this heat sink right next to it maybe and they are quite close together so it might be best to put on a new bit of heat shrink when we redo this so I've cut them and pulled them back some fresh solder to wet the joint and get the heat out of the soldering iron in there properly and again we'll try and untwist these which have been put through the holes in the terminals uh, heat's certainly going out of it, I might have to turn my solder and station up a bit here try and get the tip under there and bend that wire back where it's been folded over yeah, that's it and I'll try and pull that back out Bit of a mat going a bit messy again. Poke that down through there. Ow, oh, getting hot. There we have it. Nearly. There's the positive. Keep the solder tip nice and clean. straighter because they've wrapped it around and then cut it off making it a bit difficult to get out again so uh, yeah what should be a simple job is being more time consuming than it should be okay so that's our old switch removed again we'll sit these on something metal we'll suck the solder off these old wires much as we can come on get in there okay mm, suck the wire up the solder sucker so now we've got that fairly stripped of solder we could probably could get more off but that'll do try and twist those strands back together and flatten them out make it nice and neat so that at least when we if we just solder it to the face of these terminals it'll make a good connection you may even want to just snip the rough ends off it and I'll see if I can find some heat shrink this looks something like the right size it might be a bit small Yeah, maybe just a bit small, but I don't think I've got any much bigger. Uh... Yeah, my next size up is quite large. That may shrink down, or maybe some of this fiberglass tube might actually be the go. heat shrink just to make it look a bit neater I'll put a bit of that fiberglass tubing that I've salvaged out of an old television or something now we've got our negative terminal attached and I should have put some solder on the wire first as well as the terminal since we've sucked all the solder off that so give that a really good coating good coating on the terminal and we'll press that down on there make sure the solder all around the sides so that's a good strong connection because since I'm not going through the eyelet itself we still want this to be mechanically pretty sound 
Well, that's going to be on the bottom of the drill, so I probably didn't really need to... Yeah, this switch is a bit different to the other one. Probably didn't really need to insulate it anyway. Now, we'll take our new positive wire off and chuck that away. I'll leave the LED on there for now, even though this drill didn't originally have an LED. And we'll put our positive wire off the old original battery terminal. Again, give the wire a good coat of new solder. Give the terminal a decent coat. Ow! Well, try not to touch the bit you just soldered. Um, what if we cut that a little bit shorter? That's better. I'll mount that on the switch if I can get it in the right position. Come on, get on there. Yeah, I'm not real happy with that. It needs a lot more solder on that. It's flowing, make sure the solder fully flows. That's better. Ooh, hot. Okay, put our soldering on sponge back so we can give the tip a clean. So we've got our positive there. Now, let's see if this mechanically fits back in. Uh, which one's top? I think that's the top of it. Uh, we have a direction switch here, which can go one or two. Uh, here goes the, the pointy bit at the front. Now, I'll see if these wires are actually long enough to to make it still. It's going to be probably the trickiest bit, which uh, looks like they'll do it. So we lift our direction switch up and put it on that little knob sticking out on the top there, little bit that sticks up. Now it looks like we may have to cut a bit out of the case because our negative wire is now on the bottom here. Uh, that's our battery. So how did that go? Like so. So it looks like we've got enough wire. Oops. Is that going to go down in the hole? It probably would. Yeah, it looks like the switch trigger switch might be a little bit bigger. This switch may not be identical. Don't know if this comes off. Oh, grease all over me. Just wipe that off. Uh, everything's always greasy. Now. Those wires seem to be going into place okay. Might have to move them a little bit. That's coming down. So we have to break a little bit of the case out so we can get our negative wire, which is now on the bottom, to fit out. We may even have to take out. Where does that sit? I think that'll be enough. We'll just take a bit of this bracing out of the inside of the case here. So I'll just cut this little crisscross pat now the base a bit. Get rid of that. Don't want to leave that floating around in there. I'll we'll leave the direction switch off for the moment. It's still a little tight. But yeah, this Taiwanese copy is close to the original. It does seem to sit, the trigger switch isn't quite the same, so we might have to file a little bit off the case. Ugh, damn grease on everything. So that's now sitting down. Let's just see how this... Get rid of the LED. Put our... Okay. Put 
our charge socket back in place. That's pulling on the wires a bit. They're a little tight, but no, they're, they're okay. Oh, is this some sort of serial number thing or something? Or someone put that there to fix it. Looks like a barcode off an old VCR. Uh, video rental tape or something, but anyway. Let's see if we can get this case back together. I think that might actually fit. Amazingly, oh, it hasn't gone in as far as it should. The trigger does seem to move. It might just need a little bit of the case falling off. Yeah, we're not quite sitting in there properly. But it does move. The whole case doesn't seem to want to go quite back together yet, but that's something to do with the motor, I think. Okay. Let's see if we can get this motor in properly. Yeah, that switch definitely isn't pressing home like it should. Possibly because of all the wires being underneath. Do they look like they should go into that hole there, so why? Yeah, I think we're going to have to remove more of this... More of this X-shaped pattern on the bottom here. Probably helps the case to be a little bit more rigid, but... I don't think in general use it would matter. Probably if you dropped it, it might strengthen it a bit. But we're going to have to remove some of that. Possibly quite a bit of it. So yeah, it's possibly more labour than it's worth to to save the eighty dollars for a new switch for a correct switch. That's sitting home a bit better. Still seems to be sitting out. Is that a different width? Maybe that's ah yes. The trigger switch isn't as wide. The push button switch bit on the front isn't as wide as the other one. That's our problem. You'd think that would come off somehow. I'm sure that must come off the switch, but how you actually remove it, it should just pop off somehow, one would think. It may be clipped in there somewhere, but it doesn't seem to be. I'd say they've possibly glued that on. Okay, so that probably will do. We just need to take a little bit off this switch opening. That's better. Much better. That's sitting quite well now. Let's just put this LED to one side, and oh, these wires probably have to... I don't know if they have to go in that hole or not. Then we've got our motor sitting in properly. Let's try and get our other half of the case on. Now the battery slot's in that way, yeah, so the... I've got the battery terminal facing the correct way. Now, now the case is going back together. Those wires might not be... oh yeah, they're, they're in now. Something here down this end is not sitting quite right. Possibly our wires. But generally that works. It's not quite as wide as the original switch. So there's a little bit of a gap there which might let a bit of dust in. Oh, we're going to have to uh, file off this other part of the case too, which I haven't done. The upper half, but that I think will go together. I'll just remove a bit of this switch opening and widen that out. And to be fair this isn't much more work than changing the original switch anyway. Now how does that fit together? There's plenty of room in there for that. I'm not sure what that serial number thing is. I'm going to get rid of that.
Oh, I better put the um, just make sure that's going to work as well. Put our um, direction switch knob back in here so that just sits on that little bit sticking up there. And hopefully that should doesn't want to slot down into the hole for some reason. There it is. Got you up. Leave our LED there. That's all good. The wires for the motor are in this slot. Got to try and angle this case in a bit to get the the bits around the motor head there. Okay, that's in. And that is almost together. There's a little gap still open there for some reason at this end. Ah, we're we missing a bit here. Where's that? Our... Ah, yeah, how does that work? Oh, that's a mechanical thing, I think. Our fast and slow thing, I think, is just related to the... Yeah, it's just a gear-related item. I better put that knob back on, the one and two there. For that, just here, flick something back and forwards mechanically within our gearbox. So that's got nothing to do with the actual electrical switch, which is just motor on off as well as variable speed. Ah, fiddly little mongrel. That's it. So I've got our one and two position. Forward and reverse. Switch in and out. Now I probably should really check the um polarity but the worst we can do is um, have the motor run in reverse I think. So it actually got a charge, yes. Uh, doesn't want to go on. Uh, battery terminal doesn't seem to be sitting quite right for some reason. Yeah, that's popped out. It's running all the time. So that must be slightly pushing on the switch. Okay. So it looks like this upper bit of switch needs to be filed out as well because it must be pressing slightly on the switch mechanism all the time. So we're going to have to file out this little bit, little indentation thing in the top of the case as well. I guess I can probably just file that right off. of it. Just take that little indent part off, or a little bit around the indent off the front, and we'll have to do the same with this side, which means we have to pull all that out electrical back out of this side and mechanical, just to make life fun. down flat. Okay, second time lucky with this. Get this inserted, make sure our speed switch is in place and that sits a little slot on that, fits under that mechanical part there. Get our direction switch back in. Switch set back into that. These two wires have to go in the slots. So okay, now that we've filed this little bit off around the switch here, in front of it, the switch can come out further, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be on anymore. We've still got something holding this case apart at the bottom end. 
Yeah, there seems to be something to do with that battery terminal. Oh, probably because that wire is sticking up. Yeah, we might have to lengthen our negative wire by the look of it. Anyway, we'll put the battery back on. If I can. Oh, stop being fussy about it. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's alright, that's gone in now. Okay. Yeah, now the drill isn't turning. Inside the case. Yeah, that seems to be working fine now. Yeah, go the other direction. So uh, that's clutch. Oh, we've got hammer drill as well. That's stopping. Oh, that's my fault. It was in between positions. That's better. Now the chuck doesn't stop when I press it. Okay, well, that seems to work. So it was a matter of filing out below and above the switch a little bit, um, breaking out a little bit of the plastic underneath it um, so that we could get it to bed down better because there's terminals underneath it instead of coming out the ends like on this old one's got two on the end so those ones are underneath on both of them but these two came out the bottom end above the bottom of the drill but yeah that seems to replace this this fine and like I say that's only like five or six dollars or something ordered off eBay from Taiwan or China or wherever it is well I guess according to the Chinese it's all China but uh, that's a debate for another day um, but yeah, that compared to about 80 odd dollars, possibly plus postage, I can't remember now, for an original. Um, I think it, you could get the original for this, but it might have even been a slightly different switch, but something that was similar. But um, yeah, thankfully it looks like the Chinese or Taiwanese or whoever's copied this original switch. With a cheaper one, so we get this old rigid drill going again because this belongs to my neighbour and he did, really didn't want to spend big money on it. He only bought it cheap second hand. It's a nice drill, but um, yeah, how much money do you spend on a second hand drill when given the price of a new one's probably $200 for a good Makita or something? Um, who knows how old these batteries and stuff are? It's not a massive battery by the look of it, so yeah, sometimes you, you think it's time to upgrade and get a new one. Now the only thing is, this is my Makita drill, the LED is above the trigger switch which would make sense because your hand's wrapped around it. So I'm not sure if there's enough room here to actually mount an LED. I just think that little 3mm LED in there wouldn't hurt to, if we could mount it in the front of the case there. So I might just take the cover off again and have a look. Because I'm sure he'd like an LED on his drill, but if it's not to be, it's not to be. So let's have a look here, otherwise we'll just chop that off with a pair of side cutters and throw it in the bin, I think. So here's our little LED, little 3mm LED. Ugh. Don't know if I've done that here, yeah, I might have caught that in the case and damaged the earth wire a little bit, but ooh, there is almost enough room there. I think you could actually mount that in there with a bit of digging around, even if I just do one side of the case rather than both. Mm. Yeah, is it worth just cutting a little bit of that plastic out or drilling it out just so we can have an LED. Let's see if I can mount this on there. Yeah, it's definitely a white LED. Yeah, it would be a nice feature to have. I mean, if it was just a paying job, I probably wouldn't bother. But since it's my neighbour and he's not a bad fella, um, I might see if I can just drill a little hole through there. And we can mount this little 3mm LED in there. Remove the battery. Uh, I think 3mm 
is about a one eighth, yeah, very similar. Uh, is that my ratchet? No, it's the other grill. Yeah, we'll see if we can get this mounted for him. Uh, if not, he's going to end up with a weird hole in his case. Well, that's got a little piece that presses down. So we need to go below that. Well, right direction, it'll help. Yeah, that went through just to the side of where there's a little piece comes in, so I'm off to one side there. And I guess it's a matter of whether I can... I might have to file the, the wider part of the LED off to get that in there. If I remove that... See if we can uh, fit that right down that hole. I might have to drill a bigger hole from the back or, or file the LED down. That's going. Well, that's made it to the front. Amazing. Now, where I can route this wire is the next problem. Uh, I think we're going to have to get that in under that position switch. Down through this little slot in the case here. Yeah, I think that might work if we go under the little knob on the Direction switch. We definitely want to keep that so it can't foul that at all. Break that down there. Well, the switch is virtually in place anyway, so that's going to sit higher. I think that might be all right. If we poke that back down around the back of the, oh, can we go around the back of the switch or is there a screw thing there? I might run it over the top of the switch. Let's have a look at this. See how this goes. We'll put our case back in there. Yeah, it's starting to lift up and get into the switch area there, the direction switch area. It's probably not going to worry it anyway. Uh, if anything, it'll probably wear this, the wiring out, which is something you don't really want because we don't want a short circuit, even though it's probably via a limiting resistor, since this is 18 volt battery. I poke that right down in that case there, right down the bottom. Oh, that's up and down. Yeah, that might actually work. Um, yeah, of course, our torque and speed units trying to escape again. Now that's going to press down on there. So that should be fine just to sit over the top of the switch, I think. Uh, our battery terminal's in. Yeah, that wire is probably a little short, little tight, but ideally we probably do we need to cut that out a bit. Should be all right, I think. Let's just get that in there. Try and get our direction switch through. Maybe I should have that it, have it up in the up position. That seems to be nice all together. help to put that in the right position. Let's actually put a screw back in this thing. Gently do that. Oh, what's this round bit? Must be off the back somewhere, is it? Sure, what that bit he's giving me here is, but anyway, we'll try and hold the case back together. And see, that's just the back bit. A couple of screws down here. Yeah, my fitting's pretty worn out, this old Torx head fitting. Don't know what it is with this size, whatever size they are, but they seem to be the only one I ever use. Everything seems to use them. Yeah. Terminals right. It's 
So there we have it. Mm. Let me lay it. That gives us some light. The LED is a little bit on the wrong angle. <laughs> it does point a bit further down than you would hope, but... Still gives enough light in a darkened area to see a bit of what you're doing. But unfortunately I can't really put it on a different angle to that I don't think. Because I've got to keep it away from the switch. Yeah, it'd be getting a bit difficult, but anyway, it was just a little little bonus thing anyway. I'm not sure what this rubber ring he's giving me actually does. I'll have to contact him and find out where he got that from. Or else he can put it back himself later anyway. I'm not sure if that is an up and down position, but... <laughs> oh, it's a lot more screwy than I was expecting. Where did the rest of those come from? Ah, he's taking the screws out of the front of the motor here. Now, I wonder if they were the long ones or the short ones. God, that's a worry. I don't have that many long ones. I reckon, I reckon the long ones go in the back. Back cover. Oh, well, that certainly helped working on it. Without those screws, that meant we could get the motor out of the case easily and certainly made it a lot easier to, to work on and you wouldn't have got the top cover off without taking those out anyway, so he did the right thing taking those out. Now where do I put the back? Oh sorry, it's on the, it's on the drill. <laughs> I thought I took it off again. Yeah, it looks like the long screws go in the back here. Yeah, that definitely was a long hole. Yep, plenty of torque there. Forward, reverse. Yeah, that's the highest speed. And less torque. Yeah, that works rather well. Bit of grease on his switch there, we'll just wipe off. Yeah, now our LED isn't in a perfect position. It could do with angling out for the in a better direction, higher up towards the actual... Yeah, this one pretty much shoots, Makita shoots right down the... Yeah, right down the chuck. But anyway, that seems to have resurrected that drill, so I'll put some info on the uh, part number of the switch or the whatever I... Yeah, this doesn't tell us anything whatever I ordered off eBay, but yeah, these switches definitely replace these, um, was it a Ma... Maqua... Maquad... Maquad, I don't know how you actually say that. But yeah, there are the ones that look like the original switch basically fit straight in there and seem to do the job. How long it'll last, I don't know, but it'll give this drill enough life to probably outlast its batteries anyway. So that's all for now. See ya.